How's it guys? Let's quickly run through the installation of Arch Linux on VMware Workstation Player. The first thing we are going to need to do is get the ISO files. We can get the ISO file from archlinux.org forward slash download. If we scroll down to the bottom, we get a list of mirrors we can find the ISO from. I am in South Africa, so I'm going to choose one of these. And the ISO we are looking for, it's the one that's about 723 megabytes in size. We download that. This is going to take a while, so uh, you can pause the video and when you are done, you can come back here. When your download is finished, we can open VMware Workstation. And we say create new virtual machine. We click on install a disk image file. Mine's already selected, but you go and browse for wherever you saved your ISO file. Click on next. We select Linux and we select other Linux. 5.8 and later kernel 64 bit. Click on next. We give our virtual machine a name. Arch Linux. Setup. I am going to make the disk about 20 gigabytes in size. I'm also going to customize the hardware and at memory I'm going to boost it up to 2 gigabytes. I'm going to say finish and I'm going to start up my machine. Now over here, uh, you guys don't have to do this. This is just to make the screen a little bit bigger so you can see better. I want to add the line VGA equals 0x342. I still need to set the font size a bit bigger. But you guys can just boot straight into the system. You should be left at the command prompt like we are here. I just want to say set font to double size. Now everyone can see what's going on. Now we haven't installed anything yet. We have just uh, loaded the, the live installer from the CD. If we go LSBLK, we can see over here, our hard disk is there, the 20 gigabyte one, but it's not mounted anywhere and it's not partitioned either. The loop zero and SR1 is running in memory space at the moment. So every time we reboot, we are going to start from that fresh ROM. The first thing we need to do is partition the disk. And we do that with cf disk and we want to apply it to dev sda we select gpt now the first partition we create we need to create it for the bootloader grub and it only needs a very small one megabyte partition so we create that and we scroll over to type and we say it should be a BIOS boot partition. Next, I'm going to create some swap space. And swap space should be double memory size. I would say that is four gigabytes. And I would go over to type and just specify that it is a Linux swap partition. 
With the remaining 16 gigabytes, I'm going to make it a normal Linux partition. And that is what your hard disk should look like. I'm going to write these changes to disk. Am I sure? Yes, I am. The partition table has been altered. So we can quit out of our utility. Now if we go LSBLK again, we can see all of our partitions are there. Now we need to format our partitions. The one megabyte boot partition, we don't have to worry about. Grub knows exactly what to do with that. We want to make a mk file system dot ext4 and we want that to be formatted on device sda3. And we also want to format the swap partition. So we say make swap on device SDA2. Now we need to enable the swap partition. We say swap on all. Now everything is set up. Now we need to mount our data partition. Uh, there is a directory already created. Change directory to mount. As you can see over here, it is empty at the moment. So now we say mount device SDA3. We mount it to the mount folder. And we can see the disk is mounted. The lost and found, found folder is there now. Next, we have to start copying all the operating system files to this mount folder. We do that with a utility called Packstrap. Now, we want to run Packstrap into the mount folder. And what packages do we want? We want the base package. We want the Linux package. We want the Linux firmware package. And we also are going to need to edit some configuration files on our new hard disk. So we have to bring in nano. We also want to boot to the hard disk. So we need to bring in grub. And we also need internet connectivity. That's why we bring in the DHCP client daemon. We hit enter and it will download your files off the internet and install everything. This will also take quite a while. So um, pause the video right here and come back as soon as you are done. And welcome back. Now that we have loaded all of our operating system files onto our new disk, we need to edit the configuration files. And we also have to tell Grub where to find all of the boot files. Firstly, we need to generate the fstab file. We do so by saying generate fs generate fstab but we want to do it for the system that is installed on the mount partition. There we can see dev sda3. So we need to output that to the mount etc fstab file. Now that that is done, we have to make this uh, mount directory the root. We do so by saying archch root forward slash mount. 
So we are now running the system as if our hard disk was the root. Now we can set a password for the administrator. We do so by saying pass WD. We set our new password. Now we have to install grub. We do so by saying grub install and we need to install the files to dev sda. It's important to note we are not installing to sda3 now. We are installing to the hard disk, not the partition. No errors reported. Now we have to configure grub. We do so by saying grub mkconfig and we need to output the config to forward slash boot grub grub.cfg. Now that everything is set up, we can reboot first exit and then we can reboot and we are greeted with our new grub bootloader and we log on as root uh, set font double size now our installation is pretty much complete however if we say we want to ping two packets to archlinux.org we will get an error temporary failure in name resolution we resolve that by saying systemctl start DHCP client daemon. Now we try that ping command again. Maybe wait a second. And we can see network connectivity has been restored. To make the changes persistent, we just enable the DHCP client daemon. Next, we have to configure our package manager. Our package manager is called Pacman. Now, before we can run Pacman, we must edit etsy pacman.conf. Now, if we scroll down here, yeah, there is a multi-lib setting. We have to uncomment those two settings. Doing that will enable us to load 32-bit packages on our 64-bit operating system. So we say control X. Yes, I would like to save, please. And enter. Now we just need to synchronize Pacman. Say Pacman dash synchronize update. Synchronizing database packages. And there we can see multi-lib has also been synchronized. And now your system is good to go. Say, for example, you want to start up an SSH server. You say, Pacman synchronize open SSH. Yes, please.
now that our packages are installed, we can say systemctl start ssh daemon. We also can make it persistent by saying enable. Now we need to add a user to test our SSH server. We say user add, we create a home directory. Let's call the user Jeff. And we set a password for Jeff. And we can test our server now. We say SSH Jeff at localhost. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, please. We type in Jeff's password. And we are logged in as Jeff. Our SSH server is working. This should good get you well on your way with getting to know Arch Linux. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.